Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation and I'd like to help you with this topic. There are three excellent suggestions for how to break bad relationship patterns. It's a very good topic because what I'm going to share with you is useful, practical, and doable. So I didn't used to be a marriage helper. I used to be a divorce mediator, believe it or not. It's over 20 years ago. So I was very good with communication. I was very good with helping people negotiate through their difficulties. And I wanted to use that to help people with their marriages. As it turned out, it wasn't of much use. I had to rediscover marriage. And so what I'm going to share with you is much more useful the negotiation. So here we go. Three excellent suggestions for how to break bad relationship patterns. Now the reason that you have those bad patterns is because as human beings we have this little software called habit. Habits are just software. It, it works very similar to the software in your computer. In fact they design software computer after the mind. And it's important to learn about the mind for marriage and even just any relationship because we don't behave according to our philosophies. If I were to ask you what was your philosophies about this or that, you'd have some really good, high quality responses because you would tap into your wisdom and you would be able to answer from that. But when you were in a situation that called on you to use those same philosophies, instead you would revert back to your habitual reactions, not react, not responses, but reactions, because all of our reactions are habitual. So, the very first suggestion that I have is to change yourself. Turn yourself into someone who is more useful to your partner. That may not sound very romantic, but it's very practical. Now, useful in a marriage, especially, takes on a different kind of value. So, in the business world or at work, you're useful in a particular way and you're paid for that usefulness. But in a relationship, you're useful when you are a good listener, when you are a good provider of support, when you are there for the other in a loving way, when your actions come from love, from wanting to be there for your spouse. And typically what happens in our relationships is we get used to each other. And I call this over familiarity. It's one of the key killers of all relationships is over familiarity. We get used to the other person. We don't admire their admirable traits anymore. We don't praise them for their beautiful thoughts and deeds. We get used to them and it becomes very mundane. So if you shift back to where you're useful to your partner, to where your actions, your responses, your observations are based in the heart, that will start to break these patterns just almost right away. And then a different kind of cycle will replace. Now, number two, Eliminate expectations from your thinking. We don't know much about the mind. And in our courses and in my books, the mind is very, very important because you are half of the relationship. And in most cases, you have become your mind and you're behaving from your minds point of view instead of from your heart. 
And so you have to understand the mind so that you can master it so you can get rid of expectations of your partner and instead learn how to love, learn how to be there for them. Expectations are a killer. Another word for expectations are desires. Desires are always based in our drive to survive, our fears, our anxieties. They're ways of compensating for things that we think we don't have. And when we have expectations of another, basically we're laying our trip on them. We're making them responsible for our happiness, for our comfort, for our peacefulness, all of that expectations if you can let go of them catch them as they come up an expectation will come up in your mind before it comes out in words stop it evaluate whether it's even fair they never are they never are number three and this is a good one this is at the crux of everything you need to study marriage Make it your passion to study marriage. Make marriage your passion. It is the one thing in your life that will be delivering to you more happiness in the form of general happiness and in the form of love than anything else. But you have to be good at it. And in this world of ours, we learn algebra, geometry, and old English, but we don't learn about ourself and your half of your relationship. You don't learn about the mind. It's a huge part of you. You have to understand how the mind is part of you, just as your body is part of you and your soul is you. You don't have a soul. You are the soul. And so your body and mind are part of you. You have to learn how to control them. And you have to learn all of that. Then you learn more about marriage. What's proper interaction? What will deliver happiness? And what will deliver grief? Because we live in a cause and effect world. Marriage is no different in that respect. And we tend to be very loosey-goosey about our relationships. We act spontaneously. There's even that saying, hey, I'm just being myself. Well, you're not actually. Yourself is multifaceted. But what happens is you get used to your partner, you become your uh, relaxed self, your apathetic self, your lazy self. Instead of maintaining control over yourself and being your useful, loving, happy, filled with love self. And if you want to break those patterns, the way to do it is to shift completely, not a little bit at a time, but make a determination. I'm going to be the most amazing partner my partner could ever imagine. And then do it. And then both of you benefit. So I hope you like this video. Give it a like. Leave a comment. Join me again by subscribing to the channel. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. Thank you for spending time with me, and God bless.